We're now going to look at the design of simplified sewerage based on a minimum self-cleansing velocity. This self-cleansing velocity has to be achieved at least once a day, normally at peak flow. With simplified sewerage, the peak flow factor is 1.8, whereas with conventional sewerage, it's anywhere between 2.5 and 3. The minimum self-cleansing velocity that we use for simplified sewerage, and has been successfully used in Brazil for a number of years, is 0.5 metres per second, whereas with conventional sewerage, it's usually above 0.6 metres per second, and sometimes as high as 1 metre per second. So first of all, we determine the peak flow from each household, QH in litres per second per household, and that's 1.8, the peak factor, times K times PW over 86,400. K is the return factor, the wastewater flow per unit of wastewater consumption, usually between 80 and 90 percent, and we would use a value for design of 0.85. P is the household size, W is the water consumption in litres per person per day. And so using this value of 0.85 for K, we have the expression QH is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 PW. Or if we wish, we can just express Q in terms of P, where P is the contributing population. So Q would be 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 PW. A really important concept in simplified sewerage design is that we use a minimum value for the peak flow. The value we use is 1.5 litres per second which is roughly the peak flow you get in a sewer from flushing a toilet. Originally in Brazil it was 2.2 litres per second, but they found that 1.5 litres per second is a better estimate. So we have Manning's equation, V equals 1 over N, R to the two-thirds, I to the half, where R is in metres and I is in metres per metre, for example. A Brazilian sewerage engineer, Macedo, modified Manning's equation in the following way. He cubed each side of the Manning's equation, multiplied the left-hand side by V and the right-hand side by Q over A, which is the same, of course, as V. So he obtained V to the power 4 is equal to Q over A times N to the minus 3 R squared I to the power 3 over 2. Macedo then said, let m equal r squared over a, all to the power one quarter, so that v equals m times n to the minus three quarters, times q to the quarter, and r times i to the three eighths. But the interesting, interesting thing about m is that for values of d over d between 0.14 and 0.92, it's essentially constant and has a value of about 0.61. So using this value for m, and an n value of 0.013, we get the Macedo Manning equation, which is v equals 15.8 times q to the power 1 quarter times i to the power 3 eighths, where v is in meters per second and q is in cubic meters per second. And we use this Macedo Manning equation to obtain the minimum gradient, i min to achieve the minimum self-cleansing velocity, Vsc. So I min is equal to Vsc divided by 15.8, all to the power 8 over 3, times Q to the power minus 2 over 3. Using the design value of 0.5 meters per second for Vsc, I min equals 1 times 10 to the minus 4, times q to the minus two-thirds, where q is in cubic metres per second. If we want q in litres per second, then I min equals 0.01 times q to the minus two-thirds. Another really important design concept developed by Macedo for conventional sewerage, but actually more appropriate for simplified sewerage, is that the sewer gradient is designed for QI, that is to say the flow at the beginning of the design period, and the sewer diameter is designed for QF, the flow at the end of the design period. 
So how do we select the sewer diameter? We have this equation, the Manning's flow equation, and we can rewrite A and R in terms of KAD squared and KRD. We can rearrange that expression and write little i is equal to i min, and so we get this expression for the sewer diameter. And you can see that the sewer diameter depends on d over d, as well as upon the values of q and i min. The range of d over d that we use in simplified sewage is between 0.2 and 0.8, and this is much greater than is used in conventional sewage, where it's restricted to somewhere between 0.5 and 0.75. So we're using more of the hydraulic capacity of the pipe. This is the procedure to calculate the sewer diameter. First of all, we calculate QI and QF, and then we calculate I min for Q equals QI, subject, of course, to QI being greater than Q min, which is 1.5 litres per second. Next, we calculate QF divided by I min to the power one half. And we find this value in the table in the next slide where D over D is close to, but not more than, 0.8. The sewer diameter is given at the top of this column where this value is found. And we can then read the corresponding value of V over I to the power one half from this value of Q over I to the half, and so calculate VF, the velocity of flow, at the end of the design period. This is the design chart for simplified sewers based on Manning's equation with n equals 0.013 and v in meters per second, i in meters per meter, q in cubic meters per second, and the sewer diameter in millimeters. There are five main columns. The first one on the left gives the value of d over d, and then we have four columns for the sewer diameters, 100, 150, 225 and 300 millimetres. And each column for each sewer diameter has two sub-columns. The first on the left is V over I to the power one-half, and the second is Q over I to the power one-half. The range of D over D that we use is between 0.2 and 0.8. So as an example, <coughs> we start with the chart blocking out the parts that we don't use, d over d less than 0.2 and d over d greater than 0.8. Suppose that I min is 0.205, that's to say a gradient of 1 in 200, and QF is equal to 2.5 litres per second, that is to say 0 0.0025 cubic metres per second. So we can calculate Q over I to the power one-half as 0.035. And we find this, in fact, in two places in the chart. But the one we would select is in the column under D equals 100 millimetre, because that's the smaller diameter. And that occurs at a value of D over D of 0.6. Therefore, we select a sewer diameter of 100 millimetres and we calculate Vf from V squared over I to the power one-half. From the chart, V squared over I one-half is equal to 7.0531, so that Vf is equal to 0.5 metres per second, and that's OK. So just to go through the procedure again, we first of all calculate QI and QF. We then calculate I min for Q equals QI, subject to QI being greater than Q min, or else we use Q min. We then calculate QF over root I min, and we find this value in the table where D over D is close to, but not more than 0.8. The sewer diameter that we're going to use is given at the top of the column, where this value of QF over root I min is found. We then read the corresponding value of V over root I for this value of Q over root I, 
and calculate VF, the velocity of flow, at the end of the design period. Now, of course, QI and QF may be equal. For example, when we're sewering a fully developed area, that is to say there's no more space for any additional houses. So the basic design concept, to mention this again, the sewer gradient is designed for QI, the flow at the start of the design period, and the sewer diameter is designed for QF, the flow at the end of the design period. And it's very important to use the correct sewer diameter because small wastewater flows flow better in small sewers. However, national sewerage design codes often specify a larger than necessary minimum sewer diameter. But in fact, we know from over 25 years' experience in northeast Brazil and elsewhere that a 100 millimeter sewer diameter is okay, and this is the minimum that we normally use. 